<laughs> Alright everybody, welcome back to a very impromptu video. Uh, this is going to be a short one. I'm sure some of you guys are out there saying, thank God. <laughs> but, uh, but first of all, before we get started, let me just wish my best to you and yours during this tough time. Grab a beer, let's have an icebox together. Yes, that's right, I made an icebox. It seemed only natural to do this once I had made a Doppelbach, uh, and this is typically what icebox are made from. So, um, so icebox basically is uh, when you take a, a Bach or a Doppelbach or other strong German beer and then freeze it uh, for a certain period of time, usually to the point where it gets about 25 to 50 percent solidly frozen, and the resulting liquid is concentrated. So you're essentially freeze distilling this. Uh, so if you are lucky enough to have a Doppelbach on standby, uh, making an icebox is really easy actually. All you have to do is take a portion of it uh, and put it in a separate container and then freeze that for a certain period of time. However long it takes you to get to about 25 to 50 percent uh, frozen beer. And you can do this with a full keg, but it works much faster when you have a smaller container. So I just used this growler I've got here um, and I filled it to a little over halfway and let that thing sit in my freezer for about eight hours. And uh, after eight hours, it was about 25 to 50 percent frozen. Very strong beer to start with, so it's going to take a lot longer to freeze. Uh, but whatever does freeze is going to be non-alcoholic. So basically, you're freeze distilling or freeze concentrating the liquid that's in there, and whatever liquid you pour off is going to be further concentrated not only in alcohol, but also in flavor. Um, Icebox is some of the strongest alcohol that's considered beer still. Uh, many commercial examples go above 15% and uh, I have no idea what percentage this is, but we're going to go with a smaller glass anyway because it's going to be an extremely intense flavor. Um, and I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Uh, this is my first time tasting it, so you get to enjoy that bit on camera. The Doppelbach that I used to make this icebox with uh, was very full of bread and dark fruits and dark caramel, and uh, it's just it's a rich beer to start with. So taking that and then turning that up to 11 is going to produce a very interesting result. So let's go ahead and pour that. I'm not expecting this to be carbonated at all, so we'll see. I'm going to pour it hard just in case. Uh, yeah, we got no bubbles. <laughs> All right. Appearances wise, it definitely has changed color. Um, it really looks to me like it's a lot more on the brown side than it used to be. Uh, previously, it was much more of a dark red. Uh, it's definitely not clear anymore either. And as you can see, there's absolutely no head on this. Um, I'm not surprised. I mean, I kept it in a growler. I froze it. Uh, I did open it to check on the ice and probably released all of the carbonation in the process. All right, so for aroma, ooh, that's concentrated. Um, that is, uh, I'm getting like a dark fig aroma, similar to the Doppelbach that it's based on. It's just a lot more intense. Um, there's a lot of bread crust in there, like I said before with the Doppelbach. It's going to carry over a lot of the same attributes, just kind of extra. Yeah, overall pretty nice. Um, it is freezing cold though. <laughs> Alright, now we'll move on to mouthfeel. It's about the same as the Doppelbach was in terms of mouthfeel. Um, kind of like a medium heavy but still clean mouthfeel. Um, it still feels like a lager. Uh, it's got a residual sweetness from the Doppelbach that does stick around still, so there's definitely a lot of uh, residual flavor um, on your palate after you've finished taking a sip. Um, it is definitely, uh, there's an alcohol presence in this that wasn't in the Doppelbach though, so that adds a little bit of slickness to everything. It does feel a bit thicker, I think. More like a... feels like a heavy red wine. So on to flavor now. Uh, and I'm gonna take small sips because this thing is definitely boozy. So, yes. That flavor is nearly the polar opposite of that cream ale that I made. 
Um, <laughs> the cream ale is much more dialed down in terms of every other flavor. Uh, this is dialed up in every flavor, uh, and it's, man, it's intense. Um, that is, is rich, rich molasses, very, very rich. Um, rich, dark fig, and uh, like a, almost a raisin, but not quite. I think it's more of a fig. Um, it's definitely stronger than raisin. It's just like everything is amplified. Um, wow, uh, very bready too. Uh, like a dark, dark, dark bread. Uh, like a really toasted bread crust. Um, no roast, you know, there's no dark roast in this. I would really hope there'd be no roast in this. It's, uh, it's delicious. Oh man, it's really, really good. Um, it's just, uh, this is, you know, very, very strong. Uh, combine it with the full-bodied feeling that it has. It's just impressively strong and uh, No real yeast character. It doesn't have any diacetyl anymore um, It's just uh, it's full-bodied it's a huge beer um, And it's just got so much molasses in it I think a lot of the toasted caramel that I previously got in the Doppelbach is gone and it's more of a, uh, yeah, it's more replaced by this deep, dark molasses. Um, it's a sipping beer, it, absolutely. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not gonna rate the beer because it's simply a form of freezing other beer, so it's still part of the Doppelbach. Uh, it's just very good. Um, I encourage you to try this experiment if you have Doppelbach on, on standby. Um, because it's just really easy to do. Uh, it's worth your time. I think this will magnify the any mistakes that might have gone on during the brewing process, but it's also going to magnify every good aspect of the beer at the same time. Uh, it's really deep, really rich, just really enjoyable. Uh, mm. So thank you for watching this very impromptu uh, Doppelbuck into Ice Buck experiment and video. Um, but if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. It means a lot to me and helps my channel become a lot more visible to YouTube. And uh, normally the types of videos that I do are grain to glass where I brew the beer, take it all the way through the tasting process in one video. If you like that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button. I regularly kick out videos roughly every one to two weeks, depending on how fast I can brew and how fast kegs empty. Uh, but if you want more frequent updates, I have an Instagram. It's at the apartment brewer. You'll see that down below. Uh, and there I'll tend to post every couple days and you can see what's going on in real time. So you can see what might make its way over to the uh, YouTube channel in a couple weeks. If you're interested in brewing the Doppelbach that I used to make the ice box here with, uh, I'm going to put a little link in the corner up here. So if you click on that link, it'll take you over to the video page uh, where you can also find a recipe for that beer. And last but not least, down below in the description box, there is a complete list of all of my brewing equipment uh, with links to Amazon where you could purchase it for yourself if you wish to. Just be advised that if you do, uh, I do collect a very small commission on it, but it's at no additional cost to you. And if you like this kind of content, it's a great way to help support the channel monetarily, and I appreciate it. All right, in the meantime, I'm going to finish off the uh, ice box very gradually, and uh, I will catch you in the next one. So until then, cheers, guys.